All right. So you guys are really in tune with infographics. I can tell from your comments about what's not working for you here that you've really got a good sense of what you do want in, a, uh, in an infographic. By the way, you know, you can have one piece of data, right, that you can display different ways. So let's imagine I'm comparing my results from 2013 to 2014. If I'm doing a PowerPoint deck, I might have a table display. You know, it's an option. I might also have paired bar charts. Totally viable option, right? So now I've got my overall satisfaction and my satisfaction by different subcategories, reliability, organizational features, um, et cetera. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for participating. I really appreciate everybody jumping in. So, you know, and, and in a slide deck, this is fine. Here's, here's something you might have in a slide deck that's starting to tiptoe towards infographics. It's not really an infographic, but it's starting to just use some shapes to make a point. I think that in this case, maybe we could have done green and, and red or done something a little bit more dramatic. But the researcher's tiptoeing towards the idea of giving the, research, the reader some visual cues. Also, sometimes we have verbatim quotes, right? And in market research, for those, some of you may be newer to market research, in market research, a verbatim quote is a word-for-word -word quote. We are not paraphrasing. So the assumption usually in market research is that when you refer to something as a verbatim quote, we are using it word-for-word. -word. We're not paraphrasing. That's, that's really important. Sometimes we have to remove a few words because um, people can be wordy. And if we have to remove a few words, we use the convention of dot, dot, dot. So maybe the first part of the sentence wasn't very useful and was too wordy. So I might have said dot, 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 movable baskets are way too small for my favorite frozen pizzas. So we're talking about what they like best, what they like least, and we've included verbatim quotes. Verbatim quotes can make it into an infographic. I wouldn't I've never personally made an infographic that was entirely made out of quotes, but I have peppered infographics with quotes, and clients like it. Um, just like when we put verbatim quotes in a focus group report, or if we quote uh, a few select open ends from a survey uh, in a quantitative research report, people really love quotes. It makes the research feel more authentic somehow than just a lot of numbers. So you can use some quotes, but you might decide to use the quotes in more of an infographic feel. You know, maybe you use infographic style people um, in your slide deck or in an infographic um, to put your quotes in. By the way, notice that we are still using quotation marks. That's pretty much a convention. Another thing you can put in an infographic or in your slide deck, of course, are word clouds. I know that there's a little bit of a religious debate in the market research world about word clouds. Can they be misleading? Yes. But they can be a very effective way of highlighting recurring language, either from a focus group transcript or open-ended responses in a quantitative survey. And it does add visual interest. We just can't, uh, can't go crazy with um, how we use those in our interpretation for recommendations and key takeaways, but certainly can help tell a story. So now, as we get ready to do an infographic, we've seen some good things, we've seen some not so good things. What do you want to make sure, and thinking that you're going to be doing some homework, what do you think is the difference? You know, what's going to make a good infographic? What's going to make a bad infographic? <laughs> 